G'day ladies and gents and welcome to the Max TV review of Spin Tires Mudrunner. So, Mudrunner is the sequel to the amazingly popular off-road simulator Spin Tires, but features a host of new upgrades, many of which were promised for the original game, which of course leads us to the unavoidable question of why wasn't the first game finished, and why does Mudrunner exist? And while I do want to keep the focus for this review on Mudrunner itself, it is a question that sort of needs to be addressed. So, without delving too deeply into the matter, as there is a lot of coverage available for this online, the original Spin Tires was developed by a bloke by the name of Pavel Zagrabelny, and was published by the UK development studio by the name of OV. Now, at some point during development, communications between developer and publisher broke down, and it appears development was taken over by OV, who is now listed as both developer and publisher on Steam. It seems, however, that while Pavel ceased to be a part of the development team for Spin Tires, he did retain control over the brand, and as a result, joined up with publisher Focus Home Interactive to develop Mudrunner, which brings us to the point of what Mudrunner really is. It's the game that Pavel Zagrebalny wanted Spin Tires to be when complete. Gameplay is pretty straightforward. The goal is to go to point A and collect a load in your truck. The load could be anything from logs to fuel, and take it to point B and drop it off. In this way, it's not much different from other trucking simulators, such as Euro Truck or American Truck Simulator. The challenge of the game, however, comes from the drive itself. The terrain in Mud Runner is a thick slurry of mud and water, occasionally broken by the rare hard-packed dirt road or bitumen road. The dense forests and sharp hills hide dangerous obstacles or sheer drop-offs that will wreck your vehicle. Rivers that will need to be forded flow through the terrain, and at some points, the roads and even the path seem to disappear completely, leading you to need to navigate between point A to point B without any indicators on where you should actually go. The dynamic terrain in Mudrunner is incredible, what the developers call real-time mud. Everything in Mudrunner is calculated from the mud density to the weight of your vehicle, but it's also remembered. Drive through an area in a light vehicle and you may have it an easier or a harder time than driving through it in a different vehicle with a different weight and footprint. Driving through the same path repetitively will also slowly dig it up, making the path slowly more and more dangerous, and making it less and less likely that you'll be able to make it through with each pass. For example, on the second map that's available at the start of the game, the island, the first time I found a path for delivering a weighty medium log load from a logging camp to a sawmill, it was a relatively easy drive with almost no issues. The second time I tried that same path, however, it was much more bogged down, and fording the small river that was the last obstacle was a little bit more difficult, but I still made it through. The third time, however, I had to winch myself through the terrain more than once, and upon attempting to ford that final river, I become stuck with no winch point available, resulting in me having to shift to a second vehicle to tow myself out to dry land. Now, the shifting between vehicles is one of the mechanics in Mudrunner, and it does become necessary the further you play through a map for this very reason. Thankfully, in this particular situation, the second vehicle was relatively close, so it only took me about five minutes to get into position to drag myself out of the mud and finish delivering the load. However, some of the paths you have to take later on in the game, or later on in a map, can be quite out of the way, with potentially up to a half hour drive simply to be able to get the recovery vehicle through. In those cases, it's very important that you do not get yourself bogged down, and thus, the challenge of the driving in Mudrunner presents itself. Now, having grown up in the country, I've actually done a little bit of this kind of off-road driving before. In fact, it was one of the things that used to uh, keep myself occupied in my youth. Bush bashing, we used to call it, in this end of the world. And I really, really enjoyed doing it. And I will say, the driving in Mudrunner across this kind of terrain is very convincing in comparison to what I did in real life. Now, while the driving in Mudrunner is convincing, the damage system is a little bit less so, although it's still perfectly fine and serviceable for the game. The damage in Mudrunner is handled by a reverse health bar system. The more damage you take, the worse your vehicle performs, with large hits and damage often causing engine stalls or systems failures. Occasionally, these engine stalls make little sense. For example, I slid down a hill at one point and took an impact to the side of the vehicle, which caused the engine to stall for no apparent reason. But, that being said, while not perfectly realistic, as a punishment system for getting it wrong, the damage model works well enough. Resource management is also a thing in Mudrunner, with fuel being your primary resource. While driving around in your truck with the diffs locked and the all-wheel drive active will help you traverse the terrain, it will also make an already thirsty vehicle even thirstier, limiting your total range. 
keeping an eye on your fuel gauge is important if you don't want to have to drive a refueler out to some godforsaken back road in order to get your hauler moving again and much like with the recovery of your vehicles becomes a major issue when you need to traverse larger distances around the island your short initial runs when starting on any map are generally pretty easy you'll get a couple of runs out of a tank no problems at all and simply pulling around at the garage will top yourself back up later on in the game however you'll run into situations where getting from point a to point b is going to take nearly a full fuel load on its own and you will need to factor in your nearest fuel station in order to top up either on the way through in order to be able to get out of the drop-off location or after having completed the drop-off in order to be able to get your truck to its next objective. From there we come to the day and night cycle. Now day and night is handled extremely well in Mudrunner and adds quite an interesting twist to the play. Even a road you have driven many times over can appear new and dangerous with nothing but the headlights in order to be able to see and areas that are not lit by the headlights are convincingly dark and difficult to see into, as they should be. At night time it's also a hell of a lot more difficult to judge the conditions of the road in front of you, so if you've travelled a path a few times, where in daylight hours a simple look will give you a fairly good idea on whether or not you should continue using this path or find your other way around, and night time, the limited light Often a path can look quite safe and then turn out not to be. More than once I've found myself stuck in the dark simply because I misjudged a road that I was driving on. So, how is all this gameplay different from the original spin tires? Well, I have had a chance to jump back and have a look at the original spin tires now. I actually started into Mudrunner first. And, well, overall gameplay is pretty much the same. The basic structure and ideas behind the game are the same, which is sort of to be expected considering that this is the game that the original developer always wanted to make. However, there are a few differences. The graphics are most certainly improved, the mud physics are far more realistic, as are the driving physics. The vehicles feel better to drive in Mudrunner than they do in spin tires. The weight of the loads definitely is more pronounced, as you would expect it to be. The overall camera control is better in Mudrunner, although the cameras still do tend to get stuck occasionally under mouse control. And there is also the inclusion of the cab view, which is fantastic and actually my preferred way of driving. All of this is added on top of a whole bunch of other things that were requested by the community. For example, on release Mudrunner is coming out with full modding support. The controller support is in from day one and supports all of your common steering wheels. In fact, the controller system is very, very, very well set up. It only took me around 60 seconds to set up my setup. Now, I do not have a wheel to drive with and I did not want to drive with the controller or the keyboard. So I'm actually using my combat flight stick, my VKB Sim Gladiator and my Thrustmaster flight pedals in order to control, accelerator, brake, and actually steer the vehicle. And these were very easy to set up and worked extremely well. Now, as I just mentioned, the camera controls were mostly fine, although I did experience a little bit of sticking trying to get the camera into the right spots while under mouse control. That being said, using the thumbstick on my joystick, I was able to control the camera in a far more intuitive fashion, and it worked quite fine. I'm guessing this is because of optimizations that have been done in regards to camera control for controllers, as Mudrunner is also due to be released on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One along with the PC. It is also worth noting that the fixed camera positions on the external sections of the truck as you're driving around, that's the fixed forward and the fixed rear camera, the first camera position that you activate when activating these views, for the most part was actually perfectly fine. It's always positioned towards the rear of the vehicle, giving you a good idea on the entire position of your load. The rear-facing camera always places the entire vehicle in the center of your screen, so you can see around it. And for the most part, I didn't really need to move the camera all that much from most of the standard driving. It was only for very specific obstacles that I was trying to get around that I really needed a better look at what was going on, or to check a piece of terrain that I was coming up on that I had yet to drive through. So overall, for those who like the concept of off-road driving and running a delivery truck, it is a fantastic game, although there are a few things I would have liked to have seen. Head tracking support is one. Head tracking is often considered an aircraft only thing, but in games like Euro Truck Simulator, it's a godsend. The ability to just look as if driving a real vehicle from the driver's position makes the experience so much better. And while the view look from the hat on my joystick or the mouse control is fine, the inability to just glance out the side window with the turn of the head is very noticeable. Also the dashboards in the cab view. Currently the dash is a simple floating hologram screen fixed just behind the steering wheel animation. 
While I do understand that due to copyright restrictions, a dash of the real machines may be an issue, some suitably generic rusty and worn gauges and lights with a little bit of rough paint over the top and some corroded steel would have hit the aesthetic much better, but for the most part, these are minor niggles. All this of course leads us to the cost. Now Mudrunner currently sells on Steam for 30 US dollars, which for the amount of time that I've put into the game and as a newcomer to the series, I actually think is quite a reasonable cost for the amount of content delivered. However, Pavel and Focus have tried to do a solid for the community of the original spin tires here, offering Mudrunner up to owners of the original spin tires for 50% off. Personally, I actually think this is a pretty good deal and a pretty good way of offering an apology for what happened with the original spin tires. That being said, I am not a member of the original spin tires community. As I said before, I started on Mudrunner. So whether or not this deal is going to be enough to get original members of the spin tires community into Mudrunner, well, that will be entirely up to them. But overall, looking at the game standalone as it is, it is a fantastic off-road driving simulator. I've had a lot of fun with it, and I do thoroughly recommend it for anybody who's interested in this kind of driving. Anyways, ladies and gents, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, take care.